Jana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakalpa Terubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadigor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so welcome everyone to our ongoing study of Kapila's teachings, Kapila Shiksha from the Srimad Bhagavatam third canto and this evening we are looking at chapter number 32. Okay, a quick review, chapter 25, someone like to read for us? Hare Krishna Maharaj. <coughs> Please accept my humble obeisances. Chapter 25, Devahuti. I am bewildered by Maya. Please dispel my illusion. What kind of bhakti should I perform to attain you easily? Explain the process of Jnana Yoga, Jnana and Yoga. How many limbs do they have? Chapter 26, Path of Jnana. Chapter 27-28, Method of Liberation. Difference between Jiva and Prakriti. Limbs Ashtanga Yoga, description of the Lord's form for performing Dharana. Chapter 29, please tell me about the path of Bhakti, various classes of Bhakti, characteristics of your Bhakti, please tell me about Bhakti. Thank you, Mariji. Thank you. Okay, so those were some main points from those chapters which we covered. And going ahead, then connection with the previous chapters. Yes, someone like to read? Hare Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Janaki Mataji. Hare Krishna, Dhanavad Pranams. Hare Krishna. Uh, Devahuti continued my dear Lord, please also describe in detail, both for me and for people in general, the continual process of birth and death. For by hearing of such calamities, we may become detached from the activities of this material world. Please also describe eternal time, which is a representation of your form and by whose influence people in general engage in the performance of pious activities. Srimad Bhagavatam 329 3-4. So you can see these questions have been covered in chapter 30 and 31. We were hearing about uh, birth and death, the continual process of birth and death. And then we were also hearing about the, the influence of time in the course of that which is a representation of Krishna. So this was the answer to Devahuti's question. So chapter 30, which was describing about birth and death, it was describing particularly a living entity in the mode of ignorance. And the symptoms are described here, uncontrolled senses, prone to lust, easily angered, often greedy and prone to violence. So those things, are the, this is all indications of tamagun, the dark mode of ignorance. And the result of that, you live in the mode of ignorance, you get, you go, you, you go to Yamaloka, you go to the planet of Yamaraj, and you have to suffer in hell. And these are some of the from the information which is given there in the Srimad Bhagavatam, these illustrations have been presented to us to show us just what it's like there in hell. 
and you can just imagine and just something really horrific, incredible. And you have to go through these kind of conditions as a result of our sinful activities. Some more of the hell which people have to endure due to our sins. So none of us want to be put through these kind of hells. We should be conscious of activities. So born as an animal and then later as a human being cut by the law of karma, we come up from originally we came down we get, we come down from the higher species we come from the spiritual world we fall into this material world we come down to the human form of life and then because we misuse the human form of life we go into the lower species of life and suffer and then we come back again to the human form so, okay then chapter 31 we had we heard about the movements of the living entity, how the living entity is impregnated from the semen of the man into the womb of the woman, and there he suffers. Some fortunate souls become conscious in the seventh month, in the seventh month of the pregnancy, and they may pray. Not all souls pray. But some souls who had that habit from their past, they may pray. And Srimad Bhagavatam, we heard how the soul is praying, right? What's the initial prayer? How does he pray? What does he want? What's his desire? <laughs> yes? Someone? He don't want to get suffer again and get entangled in the Maya. He want to come back to the Lord and serve Lord. Does he pray? Well, he's in the womb. What's his concern? Does he want to stay there or does he want to come out? Suffering Maharaj. He want to immediately come out. Come out. Oh. He wants to come out. And initially his prayer is to come out. But then when it times come, when it time comes for the the birth, then what happens? You don't want to come out, Maharaj. He yeah. wants to stay there. What happened? He's because trying he... to come out. Maya takes care, Maharaj. Why he doesn't want to come out? Because he doesn't want to fall in the lap of Maya. Yes, he's more aware that he's going to suffer in the lap of Maya. The soul suffers in the womb. We heard about the prayers of, by the embryo and then forgetfulness. After being born, then he forgets everything. We become completely enamored by the situation around us. We're thinking, this is my home, this is my mother, this is my father. And then Lord Kapila spoke about the danger of bad association. And we have to be all very conscious about association, how we associate with the, each other. It's very important. And then the chapter finished with Lord Kapila speaking about reclaiming our original nature as spiritual beings. Okay, so we're going on now to chapter 32 entanglement in fruit of activities. Someone can read? Arik Maharaj. Having connection with the previous chapters, <clears throat> having explained the results of condemned sinful activities in chapters 30 and 31, now Kapila explains the results of prescribed activities with material desire. Living in his house, he enjoys the results of the various dharmas, Kama, Artha, and Dharma. And again, he performs those dharmas. Krishna Chakravarti. All right. So, chapter 30, we heard about Tamagun. Chapter 31 was some more passion. There's a lot of passion there. 
And now th chapter 32, we're going to hear about something like uh, the mode of goodness, but mixed, not pure goodness, mixed with material desires. Someone can read this here? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. Connection with the previous chapter. Although in the chapter 31, Kapila Muni implanted fear in the heart of his listeners by describing the horrific results brought by the attempt to enjoy contrary to Shastric <coughs> regulations, one may nevertheless wonder if one can be happy and avoid suffering and revert the true pious, non-devotional following of Shastra. By delineating the results obtained by the followers of various parts of karma, Kapila Muni will answer that question. Hare Krishna. All right. This is from Barijan Prabhu's book, which is a summary of the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, so he's described there how Lord Kapila is now going to speak about uh, how to avoid suffering, but at the same time, not devotee, non-devotional active, non-devotional following of Shastra. In other words, he wants, his purpose is just to avoid suffering. So it's not devotional service. But there's some goodness there because he's, he's following Shastra. An attempt to, to have some respect for Shastra. To enjoy uh, describing how, how we can people often they follow Shastra but just simply for their own material purposes not for devotion so the chapter begins with a section on Sakama Karma in other words material desires so they can reach the heavenly planets, they can go up to the heavenly planets, and then they fall back down. When their karma, when their punya is finished, they'll come back down. So the first four verses will be on that. And then text, text five to seven will describe niskam karma, how the, the, the person can gradually advance towards the spiritual sky, gradually. It's not going to be very quick, it's going to take time. It's a niskam karmi. Text 8 to 11. Worshippers of the Haranyagarbha. Who knows? What's Haranyagarbha? Who's that? Surya. Surya. Huh? Sun God. Sun God. Well, Lord not Brahma he, Maharaj? Huh? Hare Krishna Maharaj, is he the Virat Rupa Maharaj? Not here. In, Surya also, so Sun God. Here, in this case, Haranya Garba is Garbo Dakeshai Vishnu. Garbo Dakeshai Vishnu. Mm. So the worshippers of the Haranya Garba, they reach such a lok. Later, they may achieve liberation with Brahma at the end of his life. So it depends on Brahma. They have to wait for the end of the lifetime of Brahma. You can go all the way up to Satyaloka and they'll wait there. They have to wait for Brahma's life to finish. And then if Brahma is going back to Godhead, they may go with him. But Brahma is not always a pure devotee. And sometimes Brahma will enter into Mahavishnu and may take birth again. Okay, so then text 12 to 15. Without bhakti, no one can enter the spiritual sky. If 
we don't have any devotion, there's no way we're going to get into Vaikuntha. Usakama Karmi is condemned in six, verses 16 to 21. And then 22 to 26, the conclusion. The conclusion of Lord Kapila's teachings is coming. And he's, he's going to describe devotional service is the best process. There's nothing better than that. And then text 27 to 38, they're going to cover re, uh, the, the main points which were taught previously, covering Astanga Yoga, Jnana, and Bhakti, and Kawa, and Samsara. The main teachings that will be summarized again in these verses. And then 39 to 42, Lord Kapila will describe who should be instructed in Sankhya. Just like in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna at the end of teaching, he said, who should hear this knowledge? So Lord Kapila also said, who should be instructed in Sankhya? And then 43, you have the Fala Shruti, the fruit of the teachings. That's the final verse of the chapter. Lord Kapila finishes his teaching. Then chapter 33, you hear about Devahuti, what's going to happen, what's she going to do. But Lord Kapila is going to finish it, he's going to finish his teachings here in this chapter 32. All right, so first of all, we hear about the Sakama Karmi. We put chewing the chewed. We want to enjoy what has already been enjoyed. First verse. Someone read? Mukundumurari Prabhuji. Nanda Sutta Prabhuji. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Nanda Pranam Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, the, the personality of God had said, the person who lives in the center of household life derives material benefits by performing religious rituals and thereby he fulfills his desire for economic development and sense gratification. Again and again, he acts the same way. All right. So you can understand what kind of householder life this is. This is not Grihastha life. This is Grihamedi life, if you live like that. He's pious, he's religious, but this is Grihamedi life. He lives in the center of householder life and gets material benefits. He does religious rituals, but for his own benefit. He desires economic development and sense gratification. This is Grihamedi life, right? I mentioned here in the very beginning, Atayo Grihamedi Yam. So, we should be very conscious. We shouldn't think, oh, very pious, very good life. No, this is Grihamedi life. This is condemned by Srimad Bhagavatam. All right, you could, you could read text number two, three, and four. Translations. Such persons are ever bereft of devotional service due to being too attached to sense gratification. And therefore, although they perform various kinds of sacrifices and take great vows to satisfy the demigods and forefathers, they are not interested in Krishna consciousness, devotional service. Yes, go on. Such materialistic persons, attracted by sense gratification, and devoted to the forefathers and demigods can be elevated to the moon where they drink and extract of the Soma plant. They again return to this planet. All the planets of the materialistic persons, including all the heavenly planets, such as the moon, are vanquished when the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, goes to his bed of serpents, which is known as Ananta Shesha. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. 
So that was a description of Grihameti life, this, the Sakama Karmi, how they, you know, even they go to heavenly planets, they enjoy the Somaras and then they come back. <laughs> they finish off their punya and come back to the, this earth planet. Okay, we're going on to text number five to seven now. We're going to hear about the Nishkam Karma Yogi. Someone like to read? Nitya Narsingha Prabhuji. Superior to the Brahmadis are those who perform their work with detachment, dutifully in purified consciousness, free from a sense of proprietorship and not swayed by sensual desire. Such detached workers can be divided into two groups. Nishkama Karma Yogis and Bhaktas. By NKY, one gradually approaches the Supreme Personality guided by the path of illumination through the sun planet. Devotees, however, are quickly taken back to guided by the Lord Himself. Right. NKY means Nishkam Karma Yoga. All right. By Nishkam Karma Yoga, one gradually approaches Krishna by the path of illumination through the sun planet. In other words, it's a very indirect, but the devotees quickly can go back to Godhead. So this is the difference between the Niskam Karma Yogi and the devotee. But these people, Niskam Karma Yogis, they're very much superior to the Grihamedes. They're free. Maharaj, uh, Nishkama means they don't have desire? Nishkama, they're, they don't desire. Right, you can see. Perform their work with detachment, but a duty, ju they do their duty. Karma Yoga means to do your duty with detachment, actually. There sh should be detachment from the result and, and perform your duty, but without attachment to the result. So the Niskam Karma Yogi, he's doing his duty, but he's not taking the result for, him own, for his own self. Free from the sense of proprietorship and not swayed by sensual desires. In other words, he's in control of his mind and senses. Maharaj, this is one of the biggest challenges. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Anyway, there's two groups of detached workers, two kinds of detached workers. We have the Niskam Karma Yogis and the Bhaktas. What's the difference? Maharaj, can I, can I tell? Yes. Uh, I, Niskam Karma Yogi are still attached to the work. They may not be attached to the fruits, but the Bhaktas are not attached to the fruits also and the work also. Mm. Okay. Yes. Uh, Maharaj, Niskam Karma, maybe somebody will be subtle, stable, not doing anything, and uh, like uh, just getting detached from the, but not having any activity. So not doing the service lordship. Another person who are doing service of the Lord by using the material things in favor of the laws. Okay. Yeah, the, the Niskam Karma Yogi, he's, a, he's attached to work in a particular way. Uh, and they work and then they surrender the result. But a, a devotee, he surrenders first and then works. Attach, detach, detach, attach. You can say that one. Yeah, okay. The Niskam Karma Yogi, he thinks, I'm giving this. But the devotee knows everything is Krishna's. Those who are actually devotees, they know everything is Krishna's. I have nothing to give to Krishna. It's all his. When we're giving donations, right, we should think like that. When you're giving to Krishna, you should think it's all Krishna's, not mine. Okay, now perfect yogis worship the Haranyagarbha, verses 8 to 10. Yes? Someone read? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. Perfect yogis and worshippers of the Haranyagarbha, verses 8 to 10. 
Worshippers of the Hiranya Garbha, Garbhodakshaya Vishnu, do not approach the Lord directly in Vaikuntha. They remain in Brahma Loka until the final dissolution of the universe and then may be transferred with Brahma to the spiritual sky. Perfected yogis also attain Brahma Loka and are unable to directly enter Vaikuntha or merge in the Brahma Jyoti. Since they remain in the material atmosphere, all these exalted souls risk taking birth again. Ah, this is the problem. Even we go all the way up to Brahma Loka, we risk taking birth again. They're unable to enter Vaikuntha. They, they have to stay up there in Brahma Loka. They're not even able to merge into the Brahma Jyoti. We remain in the material atmosphere until the end of Brahma's life. And then they may be transferred to the spiritual sky. All right? So that's the yogis. All right? Someone can read here. Radha Harini Madhaji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. <laughs> Contrasting bhakti with other prescribed Vedic paths. After describing the followers of different spiritual paths and the results they achieve, Kapila advises his mother, Therefore, my dear mother, by devotional service, take direct shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is seated in everyone's heart. Uh, 32, chapter, text 11. All right. So, Lord Kapila's conclusion, is direct advice to his mother, just sir, take shelter, direct shelter. Why risk these other processes? Just take direct shelter of the Supreme Lord. But Lord Kapila describes who is seated in everyone's heart. He's, so he's talking about the Super Soul, because meditation on the Super Soul. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh -huh. Maharaj, there's a devotee, Nanda Sutta Prabhuji, raised his hand for some question, Maharaj. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, my question is, uh, when I go through this class, I feel like I am a mixture of Grihamedi, Nishkama, Shakama, little bit of Bhakti. It seems to be like theoretically, it seems to be everything is a mixture for me. How does the consciousness can be trained to practice Bhakti? I mean, even though we have read Bhagavadam, we have understanding theoretically, practically what is the way to get it done? Because well, what I'm seeing is everything seems to be I'm matching with every aspect of this, whatever we're reading now. The solution, the solution is, the solution is you have to have proper sadhana. You have to have a regulated program of devotional service, beginning in the morning with hearing and chanting. You know, regularly you have to wake up early in the morning, you have to chant the holy name and worship Krishna and you have to hear Srimad Bhagavatam in the association of devotees. And naturally, gradually, we will purify our consciousness. It's going to take some time, but gradually it will come about. Just like somebody gets a knock on the head and we lose our memory. You know, you may have been a, in a, a, a nasty car crash, and you got a bump on the head, you're knocked unconscious, and when you come back to consciousness, you can't remember anything. You don't remember who you are, you don't remember even your name or anything. But the doctor knows who you are, he's got your ID, and he knows your family and everything, and bring, they gradually they bring you to everyone, and you're introduced to people, and gradually, gradually you start to remember who you are. You go home, this is your home, and then, oh, you have a job, this was your job, you know. So that similarly with Krishna consciousness, we come to Krishna consciousness, and in the beginning, it's very strange, you know. It's, we're all, it's like it's new to us, but actually it's not really new to us. It's actually our original nature, and we just have to be there, and we have to hear, and we have to take part, and gradually, gradually the memory comes back, and we start to remember that, yes, 
I am Krishna's servant and Krishna is my worshipful Lord and Master. Like that, you know, gradually we get conscious and we give up the material hankering and the desires for sense gratification, which are not really our original nature, which is not our actual consciousness. That's our contaminated consciousness. So we have to remove that contamination by proper hearing and chanting. Yes? Yeah. Only thing is, Maharaj, how do we keep ourselves motivated in the process, you know? The problem is you get up in the morning, you do the chanting, you hear, the material desires reduced, but it's not gone. The family attachment is reduced, but it's not gone. It is still lingering. Oh, yeah. And I don't it is it's not going away also. Well, so under these circumstances, you know. We're, we, you don't want to give up that attachment. You just want to purify that attachment. That the attachment should be in relation to Krishna consciousness. You have to see the family and you have to see everything in material world in relation to Krishna. That Krishna has arranged this for me. Krishna has put me into this situation. He has given me this family and so on. He's given me this situation. This is Krishna's arrangement for me. I have to use it in Krishna's service. I have to be Krishna conscious in this situation. It's not that you want to become detached, but we want to purify the attachment. It should, we should see everything in relation to Krishna. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. So it's, it's a changing the vision, you know. It, it, sometimes we think, oh, the attachment is wrong. No, it, it's naturally, we should be attached, but we should be attached in a Krishna conscious manner. The, Prabhupada explains, devotees should not be neglectful. And sometimes we think that, oh, attachment, detachment means well, I shouldn't take any interest. But Prabhupada, just, he, doesn't, he says, no, that's not the way. Devotees should not be neglectful. We should understand everything in relation to Krishna. That Krishna has put you into that situation. He's given you a family and everything. You have a duty there, and that's a duty to Krishna. Also, don't see it as something separate from Krishna. Okay. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. We'll go ahead here. Yes, someone please read. Radhe Shuri Mutaji. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Transcendental loving relationship. Lord Kapila advised his mother that she did not need any indirect process. She was already situated in that direct process because the Supreme Lord had taken her as her son. Actually, she did not need any further instruction because she was already in the perfectional stage. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you. So Prabhupada's purport explains Devahuti's position that she's already perfect, she's reached, she's come to that perfectional stage. So she's not going to go to any other process, she's only going to do the, the direct process. Direct process means bhakti yoga. Okay. <coughs> we, ha we have an excerpt here, because sometimes people think, you know, it's all one, all the path, you know, you go back to Godhead and it's all one, everybody's a devotee. But go back to Godhead, even in Vaikuntha, there's a lot of difference, there's different positions there. So I want you to hear this section from Brihad Bhagavatamrita. It's from the second part of the Brihad Bhagavatamrita, first chapter, uh, verses 10 to 22. Someone's going to read. Please listen. Wishing to hear of, one, the result of great devotion to Lord Gopikanta, and two, the Lord's pastime place above Vaikuntha, and not fully understanding them 
in her heart. She asked Sri Parikit. By performing auspicious duties, householders with material desires can achieve the three worlds. And persons who have renounced their homes can reach the four worlds beyond those. However, when their enjoyment ends, all these persons return to this mundane earth. Only a select few of those who have reached the planets of Maharloka and other higher planets become liberated with Lord Rama. Sanatan Goswami explains that the three worlds are Bhu, Bhuvaha, and Sva planets. Householders in those realms wish to enjoy the fruits of their work. Householders who have no material desires by performing prescribed duties may go to Maharloka or other higher planets, and when their hearts are pure, may become liberated. Persons who are not householders are Naishtika Brahmacharis, Vanaprasts, and Sannyasis. The four realms they attain are Maharloka, Janaloka, Tapaloka, and Satyaloka. They who have material desires again take birth, but they who have no material desires and act only out of duty are liberated. Some persons, after enjoying on Archir Loka and other planets, gradually attain liberation. Renounced souls devoted to transcendental knowledge quickly attain liberation. The Lord's devotees who have material desires may enjoy by fulfilling those desires. And when they become fully purified, they also attain the Lord's abode. Devotees having no material desires at once attain the blissful spiritual realm of Vaikuntha, which is difficult even for liberated souls to attain. Pure devotees living in Vaikuntha enjoy forever in varied ways the happiness of directly serving Sri Krishna's lotus feet. In comparison, the nectar of liberation appears insignificant. Some of those devotees are situated in knowledge, jnana bhaktas. Some are pure devotees, shuddha bhaktas. Some are devotees situated in love, prema bhaktas. Some are devotees situated in great love, prema pura bhaktas and some are overwhelmed by love, prematura bhaktas. Sanatana Goswami explains that here, four and a half kinds of love are described, with the jnana bhaktas being the half. The devotion of jnana bhaktas is mixed with a desire for knowledge, not the pathetic liberation of the impersonalists, but the awareness of the glories of serving the Lord's lotus feet. Maharaj Bharat is an example of a jnana bhakta. The Sudha bhaktas are devoted to the nine processes of devotional service. Their devotion is not distracted by fruitive work, a desire for knowledge, or non-devotional renunciation. Maharaj Ambarish is an example of a Sudha bhakta. The prema bhaktas want only to serve the Lord's lotus feet with love. Hanuman is an example of a prema bhakta. The prema para bhaktas are the Lord's affectionate associates who by the Lord's boundless mercy are tied by the chains of affectionately gazing at the Lord with longings of love, friendship with the Lord, and close friendship where they joke with the Lord. The Pandavas are examples of Prema Para Bhaktas. The Prema Tura Bhaktas are always overwhelmed by the treasure of wonderful love. Uddhava and the Yadavas are examples of Prema Tura Bhaktas. Although Vaikuntha cannot be attained without love for the Lord, there are varying degrees of that love. Thus, the Prema Bhaktas are better than the Shuddha Bhaktas. The Prema Para Bhaktas are better than the Prema Bhaktas. 
than the prema tura bhaktas are better than the prema para bhaktas. Since the levels of these devotees vary, it seems unfitting the results they achieve be the same. Nonetheless, no one is considered better than anyone else in Vaikuntha. It follows that among devotees in Vaikuntha, there is equality, even to special Vaikuntha perfections, such as living near the Lord or attaining a form like His. A goal higher than Vaikuntha is unheard of. Each in his own part of Vaikuntha, each according to his own kind of love, and each attaining his own object of love, everyone is happy. The devotees in their different mellows have all attained the highest happiness. I still wonder, however, what is the destination of they who are devoted to the Lord, who performs the Rasalila? My heart is not happy if others attain the same destination attained by loving devotees who chant the holy names and who, indifferent to all material goals, yearn to become Shivrata's maidservants. I cannot tolerate that others attain the same destination as Nanda and Yasoda and their associates. Okay. Were you able to were you able to absorb that? Yeah, I hope so. The in section is there from Brihad Bhagavatamrita describing all the different levels among devotees, even in Vaikuntha. You know, sometimes we think, well, everyone's equal, and everyone do, do feel equal, but still there's distinctions as it was described. Right? The, the Sakama Karmis, they can go up to heaven, and the Niskam Karmis, they can go up to the topmost planets, up to like a Mahaloka, Janaloka, Tapaloka, Satyaloka. But they still stay in the material world. And then beyond that, then we heard about the, the Jnana Bhaktas. Jnana Bhaktas, and the example was who? The example of a Jnana Bhakta? Hanuman. Lord Hanuman. No, no. Bharat. Bharat. Sanat huh? Sanat Kumar. No, no. Bharat. Bharat was the example. Bharat Maharaj. Okay. Yeah, Bharat Maharaj. Bharat Maharaj was the example given in Jnana Bhakta. No, no, that he, he had knowledge mixed with devotion. And then higher than Jnana Bhakta, we had the Shuddha Bhakta. Oh. Above the Bharat Maharaj, you had, uh, well, Hanuman was a prima bhakta, yeah. and uh, the Pandavas, they were, Shuddha bhakta. They were, Abhi. they were above Hanuman. They were the prema prema tara bhaktas, and then, and the topmost devotees were the Yadus and the Uddhava. They were considered the topmost devotees in Vaikuntha. That's not counting all the people who are there in Goloka. So that was why, you know, in the recording, the lady who was speaking, she was speaking as Uttara. Uttara is the mother of Parikshit. Parikshit is speaking this Srimad ba this prayer Bhagavatamrita to his mother Uttara. Maharaj Parikshit is speaking before he leaves the body. And he was describing the essence of Srimad Bhagavatam to Uttara. So Uttara, Mother Uttara said she could not tolerate to think people being equal to Nanda and Yashoda. Above Vaikuntha is Goloka. But the people in Vaikuntha, they're not so conscious of Goloka. Anyway, the point is there's so many different levels, even in the spiritual world. 
So to say that all paths lead to the same goal is really not there. All right. Would someone like to read this one for me? The process of pleasing Krishna. <clears throat> Any language you should submit and you should feel that that I am worthless. My Guru Maharaj has given this chance to serve Krishna, to offer Krishna. My Lord, I am worthless. I have no capacity to serve you, but on the order of my Guru Maharaj, I am trying to serve you. Please do not take any offense. <clears throat> Accept whatever I can do. That's all. That is my request. That mantra is sufficient. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, you may be bhakta praise chati. <clears throat> you may bhakta praise chati. Krishna never said that one who offers me with <clears throat> Sanskrit mantra. Keep reading. You may bhakta praise chati. Real thing is bhakti. Feeling. How to serve Krishna? How to please him? This is wanted. No, not to see that you are a very good scholar in speaking in Sanskrit or English or that is not. Always feel that I am worthless but I have been by the grace of my Guru Maharaj I have been given a, the chance. So kindly accept whatever little service I can give. I am offensive so kindly excuse me. In this way be humble, meek and offer your feeling and Krishna will be satisfied. Room Conversation, April 12, 75, in Hyderabad. All right. So Prabhupada is describing the process of pleasing Krishna. All right. This is the mood we should have. We should feel ourselves humble, insignificant, worthless, that is good. That's a good, healthy attitude to think like that. Whatever we can do, it's the mercy of my spiritual master. So that is the proper mood. We give the credit to the spiritual teacher. We never think I, we could do anything on our own. Whatever we have achieved, it's by the grace of our spiritual teacher. It's a very nice quote here. All right. Yes. What is this? Someone read. What's the title? Ashish Prabhuji. Bhagavad Pranams Maharaj. Without bhakti, no one can enter the spiritual sky. Shloka 12 to 15. All those who maintain self-interest are forced to come back to the material world. Yes. My dear mother, Someone may worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead with a special self-interest, but even demigods such as Lord Brahma, great sages such as Sanat Kumara and great Munis such as Marichi have to come back to the material world again at the time of creation. When the interaction of the three modes of material nature begins, Brahma, who is the creator of this cosmic manifestation, and who is full of Vedic knowledge and the great sages who are the authors of the spiritual path and the yoga system come back under the influence of the time factor. They are liberated by their non-fruitive activities and they attain the first incarnation of the Purusha. But at the time of creation, they come back in exactly the same force and positions as they had previously. Mm. So can you appreciate this point, that even you come to the position of Lord Brahma or you may be one of the great sages such as Sanat Kumar or a Muni such as Marichi, but even they may have to come back to the material world again at the time of creation. At the time of dissolution of the universe, they leave the material world and they may enter again into the 
Where do they go at the time of the dissolution of the universe? Mahavishnu? Yes, yes, the end, the first incarnation of the Purusha. The first incarnation of the Purusha is Mahavishnu. And then, at the time of creation, they come back again in the same form and position as they had previously. So even you may get up to that big position, you become a great sage or so, but it doesn't mean you'll go back to Godhead. We have to be careful. We have to be very conscious if we have some self-interest, that's a problem due to special self-interest. If we have a self-interest that will bring us back in the material world. So we have to become selfless. That's it. Become selfless. And the way to become selfless is to become Krishna conscious. The more we're Krishna conscious, the less we will have self-interest. Our interest will be Krishna. So this is the idea, we have to purify the interest, become interested in Krishna, Krishna's service, everything in relation to Krishna, the Supreme Lord. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's commentary, someone can read? Maharaj? Yes? Gandhapana Maharaj, I believe Rajesh Prabhuji has a question. Oh, okay. Dandavat Pranams Maharaj. Maharaj, the text that we read just now and uh, the verse number 8. So in verse number 8, it says that, you know, uh, Brahma gets liberated uh, after, after his lifetime and he goes to the spiritual world. And here in this verse, uh, we read that uh, Brahma and sages like Marichi they come back to the material world. They so, may come back. It doesn't say that, that it said they can't, they, they may come back. Someone may come back. The great sages uh, have to come back, Maharaj. Have, to, have to come. Uh, yeah, if they have a self interest, they have to come back. If they have a self interest, then they have to come back. That's the point. So, so in verse 8, when it says, Maharaj, that anyone who worships Hiranyagarbha, he, uh, you know, along, along with Lord Brahma, uh, at the end of his life, uh, they, they go to spiritual world. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and then now, if, if Brahma himself has to come back to the material world again, then uh, how is it that, you know, those, those people... Well, will you, ha you have to understand, it's saying that it, there's a standard. If they're going to this, into the spiritual world, they cannot have self-interest. If they keep a self-interest, then they have to come back. But if they don't have any self-interest, if they've completely taken shelter of the Lord, then they will go to the spiritual world. So it's like that. They have to become selfless, no self-interest. But if they maintain the self-interest, even if they're Lord Brahma or one of the four Kumaras, then they will not get into the spiritual world. They will come back in the material world. Maharaj, how to one? Huh? <laughs> The example of Sanat Kumara is given here. They are like founders of the Kumar Sampradaya. And, and even if they have to come back to the material world, uh, how, to, how to correlate to this, you know? Well, Brahma is the, the Adi Guru in our Sampradaya. Right. So they're in every universe. They've got four Kumaras. They've got, they've got Brahma, just as Brahma is there in every universe. The four Kumaras are also there. It's not just because you're Lord Brahma, one of the four Kumaras, that they all go back to Godhead. They have to become self without self-interest. They can be liberated back to Godhead. 
So it's not because you give Godhead, but you, we have to be worthy to go back to Godhead. We have to give up our self-interest. No selfish desires. Okay, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh-huh. Thank you, Prana Maharaj. One more follow-up question, Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, Lord Brahma, and also we say Haridas Thakur in the Gaur Leela is an incarnation of Lord Brahma. So, Maharaj, how do I understand that at the same time, both Brahmas are uh, present? How do I connect that, Maharaj? Well, Brahma is a position. Just like Vidura came as Yamaraj. What happened when Vidura came? Does it mean there was no Yamaraj? No, somebody took his place. Somebody had to fill in. Just like if you go away for a holiday, somebody will take your job, somebody has to cover up for you from the job, right? Somebody will take your place and fill up, cover your position. So Yamaraj, it's a position. Somebody takes over his duty when Vidura came. That's so similarly, Haridas Thakur comes. Somebody takes the position, the Lord Brahma. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yes? Any, any more questions? Yeah, Maharaj, can we say that the Brahma and the resident of higher predatory systems, they can easily abstain from self-interest. However, a tinge of, which is a rare possibility of coming under influence of, or coming uh, in a trap of self-interest, make them come back to the material world. So very easily they can go forward journey to spiritual sky. But however, they have to maintain this uh, status uh, of uh, zero self-interest. By keeping their consciousness fixed on Krishna and reminding themselves as, that they're the eternal servant of Krishna. Uh, but Maharaj, uh, uh, we understood that uh, Niskam Karma Yogi qualify themselves to come to the higher planetary system starting from Jan Loka, Mahar Loka, Tap Loka and all. So they have qualified themselves uh, becoming a Niskam Karma Yogi. Still, they, is there, I mean, still there is a possibility of uh, having self-interest Yes, there's always a possibility, because they're still in the material energy. And okay. that, under the influence of that material energy, you, you, you go up to the higher planet, you can become proud. You can become influenced by that situation. You think, oh, I'm very great, I'm very renounced, I'm very detached. So that pride, that is self-interest. Fine, Maharaj. So that rare possibility also make them uh, come back to material world. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Fine, yeah. Thanks, Maharaj. So therefore, we say surrender means also meek and humble. There has to be that genuine humility. And so Prabhupada was describing, we just read, Prabhupada said, one should think I'm worthless, I'm hopeless, I'm useless. It's whatever I do, it's the mercy of my spiritual master. So that mood should be there. The genuine mood of just being selfless. Not having any thought of one's own position, or one's own achievement, but simply offering everything for the pleasure of Guru and Krishna. So Maharaj, can we say that it is going to higher planetary system is again a kind of, uh, we are entering to the more dangerous uh, area where uh, it is difficult to tackle the 
self ego a kind of well we, we we do say that the more you make advancement the more you take responsibility then the more dangerous it is <laughs> right <laughs> Yeah. The, the more you take on responsibility, uh, then uh, the, the higher you... And Prabhupada even told the story, right? Punar Mushtika Baba. Yeah. Right? Again, yeah. become a mouth. So, you have to be very careful. Yeah. That consciousness can always come there, thinking, oh, I'm, I'm really great, I'm so wonderful. And we forget. So we have to always pray to Krishna. And Prabhupada also taught us, he said, I'm always praying to Krishna, please don't let me fall down. Yeah. Nice. So like even at our insignificant, although we are, we have no big position, but still we pray to Krishna, don't let me fall back into the material life, don't let me go back. And one devotee asked Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, sometimes when I'm chanting I remember what I was doing before I became a devotee. And Prabhupada said, yes, Krishna is telling you, if you ever give up Krishna consciousness, you have to go back to that hellish life again. You have to go back to all these terrible habits and undesirable situations. Okay, we'll go, yeah. we'll go yes. ahead. Vish Vishwanath Chakravarti's commentary, yes? Yeah? Sanatan Prabhuji. Sankarshan Prabhuji. Yeah, Prabhuji. Uh, Vishwana Chakravati Thakur's commentary verses 12 to 15. In the Gita, the Lord says, Maam eva prapadyante maya netam tarantite. Those who surrender to me cross over my maya. Bhagavad Gita 4.11. From this it is understood that even Brahma does not get liberation if he does not have bhakti. Right, that's the point. If he doesn't have bhakti, he doesn't get liberation, right? If, that, if he has self-interest, it means he's lacking in his bhakti. Yeah. But he should get liberated. If he's a pure devotee, he'll get liberated. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. What has been described here are Brahma, sages, yogis, jnanis and kumaras who are devoid of bhakti in some particular universe. Hmm. The Brahmas and sages of all other universes have bhakti and thus attain liberation in prema bhakti with dasya and other relationships according to their degree of bhakti. Mm -hmm. Okay, so according to their degree of bhakti. So we, that's why I was reading, I had that reading from the Brihad Bhagavatamrita to highlight that, that there are so many different degrees of bhakti, even in the spiritual world. Okay, we'll go ahead. Yeah, 16 to 21, Lord Kapila criticizes Sakam Karma. After describing those who are de dedicated to Nivritta Karma in 5 to 7, Kapil advised to surrender to the Lord in 3.32.21. After describing those dedicated to Pravritri Karma, the Lord again advises to just worship the Supreme Lord with devotion. So Nivritta Karma, what's that? That we call that Niskam Karma Yoga, right? And then yes. pavriti, pavrita karma, that is sakam karma yoga. People who are sakama karma yoga, they, 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 we said the grehamedis, they're dedicated to that kind of thing. They want to enjoy the work, the fruit of their work. So Lord Kapila told Devahuti, just worship the Lord with devotion. Don't think about all these other things. Yes, someone read? Sharda Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please. Hare Krishna. 
22 to 26 conclusion of lord kapila's teachings by bhakti goals of other paths are also achieved 22 to 23 jnana and vairagya quickly achieved by practice of bhakti 24 and 25 symptoms of a devotee 26 one bhagavan is perceived differently through different processes mm. okay so this is a, one of the conclusions here from Lord Kapila's teachings that if you just simply do bhakti, you get the results of, you know, you may want these other things which are there in the other paths. It all comes about by bhakti. Knowledge and detachment are also achieved by bhakti. And the different qualities, all the devotee. So, uh, Lord Kapila describes these things that simply do bhakti, you get everything. You don't have to go anywhere else. The one Bhagavan is perceived differently through different processes. You want to perceive the Lord, maybe you're attached to the impersonal Brahman feature. You can perceive that by bhakti. You want to see the Lord as a super soul, you can do bhakti. You want to worship the Lord directly, in the spiritual world, you can do that. <coughs> Conclusion of Lord Kapila's teachings. My dear mother, I therefore advise that you take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, for his lotus feet are worth worshipping. Accept this with all devotion and love, for thus you can be situated in transcendental devotional service. Lord Kapila is telling his mother, just simply take shelter, the Supreme Lord. And then, of course, here's a very, a very similar verse to what we know from the first canto, second chapter. Hmm. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Jnana Yat Asu Vairagyam Jnanam Yat Brahma Darshanam. Little difference. We know Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Jnana Yati Asu Vairagyam Jnanam Chayada Hai to come. It's the same message, the same teaching. It's repeated, just a little change in the words. Engagement in Krishna consciousness, an application of devotional service unto Krishna, make it possible to advance in knowledge and detachment as well as in self-realization. You, you want knowledge, you want to be detached, just simply practice Krishna consciousness and it will all come. Everything's there. All right? Someone read, please, text 24. Come, Prima Hare Krishna, 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 Okay, which is a, the exalted devotee become equipoise, uh, agreeable, not agreeable. Another is transcendental. So something we, we like, we don't like, doesn't worry about it. If you're transcendentally situated, you can put up with anything. Wherever you go, some place very hot, some place very cold, some place very rich and opulent, some place is very poor and simple, doesn't matter. If a devotee is properly situated, transcendental, you can do anything. Prabhupada gives the example, he said, devotee is just like the machine which the farmer has for threshing wheat. Wherever you put it, it will do the same activity. It's not going to change. That machi the machine only does that one thing. I was just speaking to a devotee today in, in, in Russia. He's over in Far East Russia. And uh, I asked him, I said, how is it there today? I, 
He said, oh yeah, it's, it's snowing as usual. Yeah? It's April, it's snowing. I said, but he said, we went out on Sankirtan. We had Sankirtan, we distributed books. And this is a devotee, a devotee's life. Even though it's snowing and so cold and windy, very cold wind, but still, devotees are going out on Sankirtan, distribute books. Even and, and then, of course, Russia, we know the situation, political atmosphere, not very favorable. But still, the devotees, are, they're doing their duty, they're doing their service. What's agreeable, you know, we say, oh, no, we can't go out and distribute, but it's too cold. But no, they don't think like that. They go, okay, that's our duty, do it. They're so transcendental, they don't consider. Okay. Go ahead, read 25. Because of his transcendental intelligence, the pure devotee is reposed in his mission and sees himself to be uncontaminated by matter. He does not see anything as superior or inferior, and he feels himself elevated to the transcendental platform of being equal in, equal, equal in qualities with the Supreme Person. Ah, yes. Now, by engaging in Krishna conscious activities, by practice of devotional service, we should also develop the qualities of Krishna. Because we're hearing about Krishna, we're remembering Krishna, so we also start to think like Krishna and to act like Krishna. <laughs> of course, we're never equal to Krishna. We're always the servant of Krishna. Okay, he does not see anything as superior or inferior, and he feels himself elevated to the trans superior and inferior, that's on the bodily platform. But transcendentally, he sees everything in relation to Krishna. 26. The personality of Godhead alone is complete transcendental knowledge, <coughs> but according to the different process of understanding, <coughs> differently, either as impersonal Brahman, as Paramatma, as the Supreme Personality Father, or as the Purusha Avatar. Ah, yes. So different people will worship Krishna in different ways. Someone worship him as an impersonal Brahman. The yogis, the jnanis, they worship the impersonal Brahman. The, the yogis meditate on the Paramatma. And the devotees will worship the Personality of Godhead, or they may have their own particular avatar. Somebody's a devotee of Lord Nishringa, someone's a devotee of Lord Varaha, someone's a Ram Bhakta, like that. Different avatars. Or even you could be a devotee of uh, Lord Narayan. All right. Going ahead, verses 27 to 36, describing the summary of Lord Kapila's teachings on chapters 25 to 29, first of all. Attaining Bhagavan realization is the ultimate goal of all Vedic paths. Bhagavan realization, right? That's the full realization. One who has Bhagavan realization, then he also realizes the Brahman and Paramatma. We give the example, just like if you have $100, you also have $50, you also have $10. It's all included within the $100. So one who realizes Bhagavan, he knows the other features of the Lord also. It's all included. Chapters 20 to 24, we heard about Devahuti and Kadama, and then we heard about the appearance of Lord Kapila. That was, the, you, know, you had the beginning, you had the Swayambhuva Manu bring Devahuti for, to, to, to be married to Kadama, and then they were married, and then they went traveling. After they did some austerities, then they went traveling, and they had their sense enjoyment. And then they had the children, and then Kardama left home. 
With the appearance of Lord Kapila, then Karnama left home. He renounced everything. And then Lord Kapila begins chapter 25 to give teachings to Devahuti because Devahuti was feeling disturbed in her mind. Naturally, she'd lost her husband, so it's a big change for her. Although she was a very enlightened woman, but still, it was a change. All right, so chapter 25, which is Prabhupada's book, which was published, The Teachings of Lord Kapila, those are Prabhupada's lectures, which he gave in Mumbai at the Juhu Temple on, that, on this chapter. But Prabhupada also lectured on chapter 26 and 27. You can read many, there's many wonderful lectures on these other chapters. I've been listening to them recently. Very enjoyable hear Prabhupada's lectures on chapter 26 and 27, 28, even some lectures also there. So uh, we heard about the Sankhya Yoga, particularly there in 26, and the analysis of the different elements and their different functions and characteristics. In chapter 28, we heard about Astanga Yoga and there was a description of the Lord, the Super Soul, the different limbs of the Lord and how the yogi can meditate and absorb his mind on the different limbs of the Lord. And then chapter 29 described about bhakti in the gunas. That, well, bhakti of course is pure, but the performer of the bhakti can be influenced by the modes, right? The person who is doing the bhakti he can be in the mode of passion or in the mode of ignorance or in the mode of goodness. He may not be a pure devotee. He may not be doing pure devotion. So in that way, our bhakti can become adulterated. That was chapter 29. And then, okay, Re recapping, astanga, jnana and Bhakti, 27 to 36. Yes, someone read? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Detachment from matter is the common ground for all transcendentalists. So that will, that will include the, the jnana bhaktas, the jnana yogis, the impersonalists. They're also detached from matter but in a different way. Just like the jnanis, they, they give up everything. They turn away from the world. Prabhupada gives an example. Uh, Prabhupada example is just like money is lying in the street. So the jnani yogi will see the money, he won't touch it. He will say, Maya, don't touch it. And the devotee, he'll take the money and give it to Krishna, use it for Krishna's service. Movement is actually real. Nirbandha Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagya Uchate. A devotee's detachment from matter. It's not that you have to give up matter. All right, go ahead. By mental speculation, devoid of devotion, one cannot come to a positive understanding of the Supreme. Yes. Mental speculation devoid of devotion. The only way to understand the Supreme is by devotion. We have to have devotion. So the mental speculation. It's not that speculation is discouraged, but the speculation has to be done on the basis of scripture, guided by authority, guided by the teachings of the acharyas. Not that we want to give up speculation, but we should be properly guided. There should be proper devotion there. Okay, go ahead. Direct, directly or indirectly, one should come to the same goal, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So what's the direct process? Bhakti. And what's the indirect process? Other processes like uh, karma, jnana, dhyana. Yes, right. 
Only by devotion, one can understand the absolute truth. Just as only by the tongue, one can experience the taste of milk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to hear about the milk, the taste of milk. Mm. <coughs> okay. Go ahead. Gyan. 27, 27 to 31, Jnana. 27, detachment from matter is the common ground for all transcendentalists. 28 to 30, Lord is the source of everything. 31, thus I have explained to you about Jnana, realization of Brahman, by which one understands the truth about Prakriti and Purusha. Mm -hmm. Lord Kapila said, I have explained to you about these things. Prakriti and Purusha, we've heard about this in course in Bhagavad Gita, but it's also been explained here by Lord Kapila in the course of his teachings. Gyan, Brahman, and the truth about Prakriti and Purusha. Okay, various paths ultimately all lead to realize Bhagavan, right? The seats of all the different paths, you can see the, the Krishna's in the center. And so we have Bhakti, we have Prem, we have Yog, Veda, Yagna, Varna, Ashram, Jnana, Yoga, Tapa. So all these different things, all these different processes, different paths. But the ultimate goal is to come to Krishna. Follow the Varna, you should come to Krishna. Your ashrams also, ash, perfection of our ashram is to make us Krishna conscious. Gyan, we know from the Bhagavad Gita, Bahunam Gyanmanamante Gyanavam Mam Prapadyante Vasudev Sarvamiti Samahatma Sudra. The goal of yoga is to surrender, the goal of jnana rather, is to surrender to Krishna. And yoga, yogi nam apisarvesham margatin antaratmanam. Of all yogis, the topmost yoga, yogi is the one who always thinks of me within himself and engages in my transcendental loving service. And then tapa, bhoktaram yagna tapasham sarva loka mahish. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, he is the purpose of all austerities and penances. Bhakti, prema, veda, by all the vedas, aham veda, Krishna said, by all the vedas I am to be known. I am the author, I am the compiler of the vedas. Yagna, yagna tarkam, yagna tarkam, karma nanyatra, loko yam karma bandana, tadartam karma kontiya, Mukta Sangha Samacharam. So, work done as a sacrifice to Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise, that work binds one to the material world. And Bhoktaram Yagna Tapasyam. Krishna said also that the purpose of all Yagna and Tapasyas is for him, for his pleasure. So, in this way, everything is meant to realize. Krishna, Bhagavan, all the different paths, it's all meant to bring us to Krishna. And this is described, we already had this verse in the second chapter, very early on in the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is a nice verse. Someone can read this verse for us? Hare Krishna, Bhagavatam Maharaj. In the revealed scriptures, the ultimate object of knowledge is Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead. The purpose of performing sacrifice is to please Him. Yoga is for realizing Him. All fruity activities are ultimately rewarded by Him. He is supreme knowledge and all serves 
austerities are performed to know him. Religious is karma. He is rendering loving service and he is the supreme goal of life. It will be 1.2.28 to 29. Krishna is the prayojana. What does prayojana mean? Final goal. The Uddeshya, final goal. Benefit. Endeavor. No, no. Prayojana is final. Final goal. Prayojana. Is it benefit marriage? What is what is the prayojana? Ultimate goal, Prabhu. Yeah, what is the ultimate goal? To achieve Krishna Pratna. To achieve Krishna, that could be impersonalism. You want to merge? Krishna Prema, to achieve Krishna Prema. Yes, you have to think Krishna Prem, right? Prem Panarto Mahan. The goal of life is to develop love of God. Love of God, yes. All right, so there's Sambandha, there's Abhidaya, and then there's Prayojana. And so the goal is to get this Prayojana, love of God. That's important. We want to develop that love. In order to develop that love, we have to have that greed. We have to have that intense desire to achieve it. We want something very badly. Mm, okay. Yes, someone read? Sushpita Sakimutari. Go ahead, Madhiji. Go ahead, Madhiji. Keep reading. Krishna. Krishna is the prayer jana. Vasudeva no. Paraveda. Go ahead, yeah. Vasudeva Paraveda. Vasudeva Paraveda. Vasudeva Parayuga. Vasudeva Parakriya. Vasudeva Paramyana. Vasudeva Paramdapa. Vasudeva Paragati. Vasudeva is the purport of the Vedas. Vasudeva is the object of all sacrifices. Yoga, Varnashrama, knowledge and austerities are all dependent on Vasudeva. Bhakti is dependent on Vasudeva. Prema and liberation are dependent on Vasudeva. Mm -hmm. Prema and liberation are also dependent on Vasudeva. We want to get Prema, we depend on Krishna, we depend on Vasudeva. To get that prema. Multi perception of God. A single object is appreciated differently by different senses due to its having different qualities. Similarly, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is one, but according to different scriptural injunctions, he appears to be different. Krishna is one, but according to different, he appears. We do see that. This is sometimes it's bewildering for people, how Krishna is described in different ways, in different scriptures, different places. So it's described here, a single object may be perceived differently by different senses. Just like you perceive milk. By the nose, it has a particular smell. And by the eyes, you can see the, the milk. It, it looks a particular... But it's only when you actually taste it that you know this is milk. But different senses, certainly our ear, our, our, our skin, we're not going to perceive the milk the way the tongue will perceive the milk. The different senses perceive the milk in different ways. That's very obvious. And so the same way, the Supreme Lord is perceived in different ways. By the eye, milk is perceived to be white. By the tongue, it is perceived as sweet. 
By touch, it is cool. By the nose, it is perceived as fragrant. By the ear, it is defined as milk. One by one, each perceivable quality is perceived by its particular sense and not by other senses. That's quite a clear example. Everyone can understand this, I think. It is realized as a possessor of a certain quality by that particular sense, and not as milk itself. But it is perceived by the king of senses, the mind, as something possessing all the qualities. Similarly, one portion of the Lord is perceived by karma, swarg. One portion of the Lord is perceived by jnana, as atma or brahman. But Bhagavan, the object of praying, who includes all the other forms and who gives all results, is realized by bhakti. Here you can see the different realizations. So, people often on the platform of Brahman, you know, to be Brahman realized, it's a very advanced position. We don't condemn someone to be Brahman realized. They're very elevated, they're transcendentalists. And similarly, somebody's meditating on the super soul. We shouldn't, we shouldn't uh, minimize their achievements. It's an act of spiritual achievement to actually absorb the mind like that on the Lord. There you can see all the different features of the Lord. Okay. So, Lord Varaha, Lord Nishringa, Hanuman, Kapila, Dattatreya, Dhruva Maharaj, so many incarnations. And here's the Supreme Lord, the Divine Couple, Radha and Krishna. Where is this? Do you know? Mayapur. Yeah. Mayapur. Yes, Shishadana. Mayapur, right. Look at the beautiful dresses and beautiful flower garlands. You can tell this must be Mayapur. Not only the flowers, but of course Vrindavan also has flowers, but this is clearly Radha Madhava. Okay, so the Kala and Samsar, text 37 and 38. Someone read? Udhar Shri Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Kala Sansara, Sansara verses 37 38. Uh, Srimad Bhagam, Bhagavatam, Canto 3, 32, chapter 37, verse. My dear mother, I have explained to you the process of devotional service and its identity in four different social divisions. I have explained to you as well how the eternal time is chasing the life and living entity. Entities and although it is imperceptible to them. Uh, uh, Shri Bhad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, 32 chapter, 38 shloka, there is varieties of material existence for the living entity. According to the work, he performs in ignorance and forgetfulness of his real identity. My dear mother, if anyone enters into the forgetfulness, he is unable to understand where his movement will end. <laughs> Kapila, Lord Kapila's warning, his mother warning all of us, if we enter into that forgetfulness, ignorance or forgetfulness of his real identity, then he said, we'll, be, we'll never know where the movements were. In other words, we'll stay in the wheel of samsara. We'll take birth again and again. So, 
This is that's the material world. Lord Kapila has explained about eternal time. <laughs> He's a chasing the living entity. We don't see it chasing us. He said it's imperceptible to us, but it's chasing us. The wheel of time. We're trying to stop time. We're all trying to live as long as we can. We don't want to leave the world, but the time, the wheel of time is closing in on us. Every moment we're coming nearer and nearer to leaving this world. But we're trying to hold on. We're saying, get back, get back, go away. The time is coming closer. We're trying to keep it away. It keeps chasing us. It doesn't let go. We don't notice. We, we, per, we pretend we don't perceive it. But it's there every day. We can see the effects of time, the deterioration. Okay. So chapter 30 was describing Tamagun, 31, Tama and Rajas, and 32, Rajas and Sattva. What happens if we do not even follow Karma Yoga? You see, this, was, this is what happened. This is why Lord Kapila was explaining these things. If we don't even follow Karma Yoga, then we're, we're in the modes of nature, we're in this tamas and rajas. So, chapter 33 will describe Devahuti's bhakti. We'll hear about that. Who is eligible to receive these instructions? Verses 39 to 42. Yes, someone read? Hare Krishna Maharaj, <coughs> Dada Pranam, who is eligible to receive these instructions? Verses 39 to 42, 39, Lord Kapila continued, this instruction is not meant for the envious, for the agnostics, or for persons who are unclean in their behavior, nor is it for hypocrites, or for persons who are proud of material possessions. Mm -hmm. Hypocrites, right, people who are hypocrites means they say one thing, they do another. Or people are proud of their material possessions. That's a, there's nothing wrong with having material possessions, but don't be proud about it. And unclean in their behavior. We have to be, of course, we're practicing Brahminical culture. We want to be clean, very clean, agnostic don't believe anything. <laughs> Envious, that's very bad quality. Lord Krishna also said to Arjuna, because you're not envious, I'm explaining this knowledge to you. Okay, go ahead, text 40. Text 40. It is not to be instructed to persons who are too greedy and too attached to family life, nor to persons who are non-devotees and who are envious of the devotees, and of the personality of Godhead. So not to be instructed to persons who are too greedy or too attached to family life. Of course, there has to be some attachment, but it shouldn't be excessive, you know. Some people get so attached to their family life. We're so attached that everything is just the family. So we have to see the family also. It's a duty. It's a a service to Krishna and see their family in relation to Krishna. So this process is not for non-devotees, that's obvious, you have to be a devotee. And if someone's envious of the devotees, then it's also a problem. <laughs> okay, go ahead. 40. Text 41. Instruction should be given to the faithful devotee who is respectful to the spiritual master, non-envious, friendly to all kinds of living entities, and eager to render service with faith and sincerity. Yes. So some of the important qualities that they should have. So the first two verses describing what they shouldn't have, now it's describing what they should be. 
It should be faithful devotees, respectful to the teacher, non-envious, friendly to all living entities. Very nice. And eager to render service with faith and sincerity. Very nice. Text 42. This instruction should be imparted by the spiritual master to persons who have taken the Supreme Personality of Godhead to be more dear than anything, who are not envious of anyone, who are perfectly cleansed and who have developed detachment for that which is outside the purview of Krishna Consciousness. Ah, detachment from that which is outside the purview of Krishna Consciousness. We're not interested in anything which is outside of Krishna Consciousness. We're just interested in Krishna and Krishna Consciousness. That's the main thing. So it's very nice. Okay, here's the Fala Shruti. Yes, go ahead Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Fala Shruti. Anyone who once meditates upon me with faith and affection, who hears and chants about me, surely goes, goes back home, back to Godhead. Thank you. So this is very nice. We meditate upon Lord Kapila, faith and affection, hear and chant. We've been hearing about him for a few weeks now. We've been hearing from Lord Kapila, we've been hearing his teachings. So we hope we can also go back home, back to Godhead. All right, are there any questions? Maharaj, there is one hand raised by Sudhanidhi Prabhu. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, I have one, uh, one uh, clarification that Maharaj has given uh, one example of uh, that materially uh, one who sees uh, the notes in the uh, a road he can utilize uh, for the uh, Krishna purpose. Is so he, my, uh, he says, is, is what? Uh, rupees, nodes. Oh, the rope in the nose. Lakshmi, Lakshmi Maharaj, Lakshmi. Lakshmi oh, yeah. Lakshmi in the road, okay. That you can utilize uh, for the Krishna purpose. You can give back uh, to the Krishna because it's a uh, Krishna property. Right. So, so my uh, doubt is if we uh, can uh, get money uh, illegally or uh, we can uh, get uh, in the material position somebody to give the gift, can we use uh, that for the uh, service of the Lord or no? Somebody gives money? Yeah, money. In the material position uh, as a gift or as a uh, like a commission or something like that, if, I, if we get. Uh, that money can we utilize for the devotional service or we can give uh, to the uh, temple or uh, it is uh, we will get the karma for that. And the money is coming by some illegal means or something? Yes, Maharaj. Uh huh. Well, but we are not, we are like a commission or like a, uh, like a gift. We are get, getting gift other than the salary. Uh huh. That can we utilize for the Krishna purpose or for a devotional purpose? Yeah, you could give that. You can give that money to Krishna. We can utilize it, right, Maharaj? Yes, you could give it to Krishna. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, yeah, you want to going to you know sometimes like that people often come. They give money to Krishna, they give money to the temple, it's unsolicited. They just come, they want to give something for the service of Krishna. And maybe they give the money without taking any credit for themselves, you know, no name or anything. They just give the money without any, uh, not looking to get any credit for themselves. If you give the money and you want to get the credit for yourself, then you're going to get some karma. But if you just give the money with, in a discreet way, without, note, any, without caught bringing any attention on yourself, then that's much better. You understand? 
यस महाराज थैंक यू महाराज हरे कृष्ण महाराज कैन आई आस्क द क्वेश्चन यस प्लीज अक्सर मैं बोलो बेस महाराज माय क्वेश्चन इज जस्ट आई वुड लाइक टू हियर फ्रॉम यू वन पर्सनल हाउ इन योर डिवोशनल पाथ दैट यू हैव टेकन आई मीन यू हैव carefully how you have avoided the complacency and at the same time taken measured risk in uh, the mission of shila propar uh how did i do it you avoided complacency complacency and uh, taken measured risk in uh, um spreading the movement yes certainly when i reflect on it sometimes i also think i took a lot of risks <laughs> I I did take quite a few risks. I I didn't really think I was taking risks at the time. I was pretty confident at the time. But as I look back on it, I I realize I did take risks. And I Please share with us what it. Well, uh you have to be very very convinced that you really want to do this service that you really feel that there's a need for this service you want to do something you want to really uh, you want to really go out there and make an effort to actually try to achieve something for on behalf of krishna that you feel there's really a need just like you know going to countries like you know different places where i went i went in the far east and you know i i would go to places where we didn't have a center and i would go sometimes alone and it's it's not a good idea to be on your own but sometimes i would be on my own because people who i was with they would leave they would go away they'd say forget it, i'm not going to stay here they just go you know i'd be left alone uh, so uh you have to be convinced that ultimately krishna has some plan and you really have a have to have a strong desire that you want to be there you you feel that this is what i want to do i want to be in this place i really want to help to get krishna consciousness established here you have to be willing to give that we we don't we, we don't go there to take but we go to give you go to a place where there's no devotees there's no temple and you're going to go there and preach you have to really be ready to give so you know i mean i i i was trained in krishna consciousness like that from the time i joined nobody was ever really taking care of us and looking after us we had to pretty much look after ourselves and you know we lived pretty much by book distribution we go out and sell books and things and like that we worked hard and we supported ourselves like that we we didn't have a lot of nowadays sometimes you know temples are they have big congregations and the congregations they are giving everything doing everything and devotees don't have they just go out and preach sometimes they go out at night and preach or sometimes they're just doing the puja and things but in our time in the beginning of our movement you know we were really we had to be out there we had to you know we were supporting ourselves there was nobody there behind us first time first time also. yeah so you have to be really convinced that this is really something you want to do that you're dedicated it's a test of one's dedication that you're willing to tolerate and act to accept that kind of austerities you know it's a bit difficult for me to do it now you know i i still would like to go there's some places where we need to you know where we don't have anything some countries even some places where I think I'd really like to go to that country and try to do something but I also wonder if if it's possible at my age now you know 
But still, I, I think about it. I do think about going other places. Uh, some anecdote on pushing uh, yourself to go further in your sadhana, like uh, uh, you push yourself a little more in your sadhana, like that kind of any experience. Well, no, just uh, this dedication, to, you have to maintain the sadhana, not that I did extra sadhana, but the, just being there itself, that is, you know, you, of course you, you've got to keep up the sadhana, you've got to, that training is, that's there, that's just imbibed, it's just without even thinking about it. Without even thinking about it, you're going to wake up early in the morning. Without even thinking about it, you're going to chant your rounds every day. And without thinking about it, you'll have your morning program and do these things, taking, you know, keeping the, the strict standards which we have. We do that wherever we go, wherever I go. Even sometimes, sometimes I'd, I'd, I'd have to get a job to stay there, you have to get a job. But even as a job, I'd still do the, all the sadhana, chanting, waking up early and chanting and doing everything. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Yes, any other questions? Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. I want to ask one question, Maharaj. Maharaj, can you share any glorious, memorable incident with Srila Prabhupada in Vapu service? Can you share any glories of Srila Prabhupada? I wanted to hear. You know, I'm, I wasn't intimate with Srila Prabhupada. I was just a, an insignificant devotee. I really, I didn't have an opportunity to be known by Prabhupada, really. One time I brought a, I, I was making life members in Calcutta and uh, I cultivated one jeweler, a Bengali jeweler. And so uh, he brought his whole family out to Mayapur. And he met Prabhupada, and he met Prabhupada, and he was talking to Prabhupada, and, and he, the jeweler, he, he mentioned my name, he knew me, because I'd been cultivating him. I, brought, I made him a life member, and I got him to come out to Mayapur. And so he mentioned me to Prabhupada, and Prabhupada said, who's that? <laughs> and, and the man pointed to me, and Prabhupada didn't know me. So, you know, I knew, I knew Prabhupada didn't know me, I, although I was Prabhupada's initiated by Prabhupada, but Prabhupada didn't know me. He, when he heard my name, he said, who is that? <laughs> so, that, that's my memory of Prabhupada. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Yes. Okay, any other question? Okay. If there's no more questions, then we'll finish here tonight. And we'll meet again on on Thursday. Right? And that will be the last class of the Kapila Shiksha. So if you have any final questions you can ask them next on Thursday night. And it's not a big chapter. I, I think we'll finish quite early also on Thursday. Okay. Uh, Maharaj, one more question. Yes. Um, in uh, our Ishta Goshti, like if suppose devotees come up with some issues. Yes, or, sorry, you know, to let ask questions uh, only related to the class. Yes, Mataji, this is about Sadhu Sangha only. We are dealing with Sadhu Sangha, you know. In all the chapters, he, he gave us a review, so I must see. I don't think it should be. What, Prabhu? Go ahead, Maharaj. Go ahead. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, so this is regarding the Ishta Goshti of, you know, the devotees meeting uh, together. And then when some issues come, so how, uh, like, uh, uh, are we uh, 
uh, as uh, devotees are we supposed to discuss the issues or go to bhagavatam read some scriptures and then um, then discuss the issue or problem so what is actually ishta goshti like i uh, i have two different opinion that ishta goshti means we discuss only prabhupad uh, uh, the purports or can we also uh, discuss their uh, like uh, if they come up with some issues and then uh, we take up prabhupad uh, purports and then re- related to it uh, so how is it to be done Well, generally, Ista Goshti is just the discussion of scriptures. We read the scripture, reading scripture and discussing scripture, discussing the philosophy. Now, if there are issues which have to be discussed, then that's another thing. That's may, you may call it Ista Goshti, but this, in the strict sense, Ista Goshti is more scriptural, based on scriptures. Now, if there's some issue in the temple that you, you want to discuss with the temple authorities and something like that, so you have to have some kind of meeting. So that's not exactly Ista Gosti. The Ista Gosti, in the in the proper sense, was just sometimes read Prabhupada's letters. Sometimes we'd read. Some maybe from Prabhupada Lilamrita also nowadays we have so many books about Prabhupada, these kind of things. That is more Ista Gosti. But of course, if you have issues in the temple, then you have to bring them up, and it may be that you don't get another chance. Except so at, at the end of the Ista Gosti, you can bring up something. What about this? Well, we're all here together. Can we discuss this? Hmm? Are we always uh, expected to connect uh, the issue with the Prabhupada purports and then bring Prabhupada purports to that uh, you know light uh, throw light on Prabhupada purport related to the issue something like that? Well, if, uh, if you can, then that's very nice. Yes, that's ideal. That's very good if you can do that. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So we will stop here tonight. Thank you very much, and we'll see you on Thursday night. Sri Lanka Prabhupad Ki Jai. Yeah. Go back to Sri Lanka Ki Jai.